Hi, I'm Jurgen Wolf, and this mini course is all about how to find your screenwriting voice. Now, what I mean by screenwriting voice is your particular style, what you bring to a screenplay. And it's sort of like you'd call it your fingerprint. And I hope that as we go through, you will make some notes as we cover each of these topics, because by the end, if you do that, you will have a very complete picture of your particular screenwriting style and what makes it different from the styles of other people. But first, are we allowed to have a style? We mere mortal screenwriters, because a lot of times we hear this, a screenplay is only a blueprint. Well, I agree that it's a blueprint, but it's not only a blueprint. For example, if somebody wants to sell you a house that hasn't been built yet, they don't just show you the blueprint, they also show you this, the artist impression or artist rendering. That's what makes it come alive. That's what makes you think about what it would feel like to live in this place. And that's what we need to do with the screenplay too, to make it come alive that way. And lots of writers have done that. Screenwriters, Aaron Sorkin, Nora Ephron, Coen Brothers, Billy Wilder, Quentin Tarantino, and lots of others. It can be done. Now, what about the director, many people say? Isn't it the director who puts their stamp on it and, and creates the style? Well, yes, that's true. And sometimes their style will be different from yours and they'll change it. But we make the mistake of thinking that this is our first audience. It isn't. This is the final audience. This is the audience you'll reach if and when you've sold your screenplay and it's been made. But before that, long before that, you have a more important audience. And it's this guy or this woman uh, who is the um, underpaid, overworked, harried scriptwriter. And I know this is true because I used to be one when I first got started in Hollywood. And we read lots of bad screenplays and lots of just average screenplays. And if a script is only average, then this is going to be the response you get. It's not the response you want. You want this response. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, though, is not to add gimmicks or to, to create tricksy kind of writing. Lean into your authentic self, the, the stories that you want to tell and the way that you want to tell them. And that's really the secret of it, is to be authentic and real and don't let yourself be talked out of that. Do it by focusing on your strengths because that's how you're going to create a screenplay that stands out. Now, I'd like to uh, share a couple of quotes with you from a couple of agents about this. And uh, the first one is from Matt Connell, who works at Berlin Associates. And he says, the bolder and more risky the idea, the less likely that anything production-wise is going to happen. Now, what he means by that is your spec screenplays generally don't sell. I mean, it's it, once in a blue moon, a spec script sells. But as he points out, um, he, it is more likely that you'll get an agent or it will attract attention. That's really your objective initially at the beginning of your career is to show how well you can write so that they'll hire you to uh, adapt a book or write an idea they have that they don't, you know, somebody who can't write um, or be a script doctor. That's how most people get started. Uh, Georgina Roughhead, agent with David Heim Associates, agreed with that. I think a calling card script, she said, that takes some calculated risks and grabs our attention without being too tricksy or avant-garde, can be very effective. She said, tell the story you want to tell, that what producers and agents want to know is what a writer has got to say. So that's what I mean by writing a distinctive script in your own style. And your voice, what are the components that make up your voice in screenwriting? These are the ones that we'll cover. And again, take notes as you go along because by the end you will have this complete picture of what your style is or what you'd like it to be. And that can be your guidepost for the rest of your writing career, really. Certainly for the first few scripts as you start out. So the first big question is genre. What genre do you like to write in? And there are loads of them, comedy, mystery, drama, etc. I won't go through all of them, you know them. Uh, and within each one there, however, there are several subgenres. So for comedy, Example might be, could be a romantic comedy, could be a farce, it could be a satire, and so on. And of course, there are also mashups of different genres, usually two genres. So 
uh, comedy and drama, which is often called dramedy, or maybe comedy horror, etc. So which of the subgenres appeals to you the most? Usually this will be the one that you enjoy the most as a viewer, and then that's a good one to choose as a writer, typically. So yes, I am suggesting that you specialize, that at least for the time being, until you get an agent or have sold something, focus your energy and your strengths on one genre or subgenre of script. Because if you write, a, let's say, a comedy and another spec script is a thriller and another one is a horror film, you know, you're not equally strong in all of those. Choose the one you're strongest in, focus on that for a while, and eventually you'll be able to, to spread out if you want to. The next topic is theme, and you may have uh, something you feel very strongly about that you want to put at the heart of your screenplays, not in a, in a preachy way, but, you know, we often say that the plot of a film is what it's about, but the theme is what it's really about. So maybe you feel strongly about justice, or maybe you want to make the power of love your theme, or maybe the danger to humanity of technology gone wild, uh, whatever it might be. Think about that and, and jot down one or two themes that you feel passionate about that you think might be good to specialize with for, for a while. Then there's also the question of tone, and that is very much related to the subgenre. So if you're writing a, a thriller uh, or a horror film, then being able to create a tone of dread throughout it is a very strong thing. Or maybe you're good at playful kind of writing, which is great w when you're doing like a light romantic comedy, maybe something like that. Of course, characters are really at the center of every story, especially your protagonist and your antagonist. And so think about and, and jot down what one or two types of protagonists are you drawn to uh, telling about? It could be a reluctant hero. It could be a rebel. It could be a, an innocent uh, in a, in a hard-boiled world, a caregiver, even a psychopath. And once you get really good at creating three-dimensional characters like this guy, uh, your s scripts will just be extremely strong. And of course, the more that you know about the characters, the easier it is for you to write their dialogue, because you'll know, you'll hear them in your head, you'll know what they, what they sound like. Settings is another element. So what settings are you drawn to? Maybe uh, ones you've experienced. So have you lived in the inner city, uh, or did you grow up on a farm, um, or are you a denizen of, of suburbia? Uh, and which of these do you feel like you want to tell about or set your stories in? Could be foreign country, maybe culture clash between two different countries you've lived in. Uh, or you may be drawn to writing about future worlds, sci-fi worlds, or alternative worlds like in a fantasy. Or even something very specific like a cult. What is it like to live within a cult? So give some thought to, to those settings because when you combine the setting and the character, you get something very strong. Sometimes you start with a character and figure out where they would be found. Sometimes you start with a setting and think about who would be living there. Your descriptive style. Now, you keep hearing uh, quite uh, appropriately that you should show and not tell, but within the screenplay uh, format, of course, you're still describing characters, your settings, and the action. And don't be scared to write in a way that some people consider literary. Of course, it depends on the genre. Again. If you're writing a fast-paced action movie, then you want to write more like Hemingway than, than Jane Austen. But if you're writing a witty comedy of manners, then maybe you want to write more like Jane Austen. Let me give an example from Nomadland. This is the opening. Um, young woman standing in front of her house looking at the camera. She is Fern. That's her name, Fern. Title sequence ends. The sound of heavy winds. Then exterior empire storage evening. Uh, the metal storage door rises, revealing Fern now in her 60s, and the snowy landscape behind her. She digs through dusty boxes and trunks, scanning for lucky items to bring with her, a stack of plates with autumn leaf patterns and a rusty camping lamp make the cut. She loads them into Vanguard, that's the name, Vanguard, a white uh, Ford cargo van, rusty and muddy, parked in the snow. Fern keeps searching when she pulls out a man's blue work coat, uh, which is too big for her. She holds it to her face like an old friend and breathes in, holding back tears. 
So that's good writing, and it um, breaks some, one of the rules that they tell you you supposedly should follow, which is never show, describe something that, that can't be uh, seen visually. Well, uh, you can't see visually that she's looking through these items for luck, good luck items, but it makes sense and it helps people who are reading the script to understand the character to know that right off the bat. So again, don't be afraid to, to write well. Then, of course, there's structure, and you're probably familiar with the three-act structure and the hero's journey. Nothing wrong with those. They're very helpful, and a lot of your stories will probably fall into those structures, but there are lots of other alternatives, too. And it may be that the kind of stories you want to tell benefit from being told in a somewhat different way. There are lots of examples of this, successful examples. Uh, Psycho, where the protagonist dies halfway through. She really should have gone to a Holiday Inn, but never mind. Um, another one is, is Cloud Atlas, very complicated structure, parallel structure. Uh, another one is Memento, which worked backwards. And another one is the circular time travel structure of Back to the Future. And maybe you have a skill within structure, something like being really good at twist endings or unsuspected endings. That's great, like this one in Sixth Sense. If you can do that, you can pretty much write your own ticket in, in Hollywood. So I hope you have been noting these down, and, and if you need more time, maybe go back and, and uh, go quickly through them again and, and write down, in each case, the sub-genre uh, that you want to work in, the descriptive style, and all of the others. And then you will know what your particular unique voice is in terms of script writing. The thing that's going to set, set apart the scripts the, that you write out of this giant mass of, of scripts that are undistinguished. Now, before we finish, I just want to tell you very briefly about a course I have coming up at Raindance. It's the Advanced Script Coach course. This is for people who already know what the three-act structure is, what a character arc is, and so on. But if you want to take your writing to the next level, then I really recommend coming to this course. We've got four Monday night sessions, one on characters, another one on structure, another one on writing treatments, a necessary evil in script writing and uh, one on marketing, including how to use some of the new social media techniques to help get attention for you and your script. It's all on Zoom, uh, four Monday nights from 7 to 9.30 p.m. London time, and you can find out more at the Raindance website. So I hope this session has been useful, and I wish you good luck, and I hope someday the Oscar goes to you. Thanks for watching.